expect to see good listening. I expect to hear things like, I don't understand, can you explain it to me? Or I expect to hear things like, can I help you understand this? Or do you get this, can I help you? Okay, we're going to show how we effectively work in teams today. All right, any questions of my expectations for today's class and every class? strategies to solve real-world problems. Thank you very much. 7-69, comparing the amount of paint needed the, uh, to the portion of fence painted in Lesson 7.2.2 reminded Graham of ratios. Look, Graham said, we can write this division problem as a ratio comparing the amount of paint being used in gallons to the portion of fence that has been, has been painted. Then we just need to find an equivalent ratio for the whole fence. Okay? He wrote the following equation on his paper. Three-fourths of a gallon, so we have three-fourths of, of a gallon, divided by two-fifths of the fence, okay? Three-fourths of a gallon divided by two-fifths of the fence. Then, because we were trying to figure out how many gallons we needed for one whole fence, We set it up this way. What observations can you make about these ratios? What observations can you make? How about 30 seconds in your group? 30 seconds in your group to discuss what you observe about this. It's, it looks like Okay, what are we observing? What are we observing in our groups? Google, what did you observe? Okay, super giant one. What else did you observe? What are we comparing in this problem? Because remember we said that a ratio means that we're comparing something. So what are we comparing? What are we comparing? Gabrielle? Gallons to fence. Gallons to fence. So in this ratio, I put my gallons on the top. What's the top part of this called again? Using our uh, math vocabulary? The numerator. So I have my gallons in the numerator, and then I have what in the denominator? The fence. So gallons over here in the numerator, fence in the denominator, and then if I go over here, how did I set this ratio up? The same. The same way. Okay, with gallons in the numerator and the fence part, because this is what I'm comparing, in the denominator. Okay? Do you remember when 
we had our x squared plus x squared plus 3x plus 2. What did we have to do when it asked us to put that problem together? To put that problem together. What did we have to combine? What did we have to combine to make that make sense to us? Carter, what did we have to do? I think it was like terms. The like terms. Okay. Do we have like terms here? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Okay. Let's practice. Um, it says, work with your team to set up equivalent ratios for the following division problems. Okay, we are going to go A through E, setting up the problems, and then as a group, okay, in your teams, you are going to be working on estimating what the answer might be. So we won't estimate first, we're actually just going to go through and set up the proportions and the ratios first, okay, and then we'll go back and make some estimates. Okay, four, problem A. Let's do it this way. Team one, I want you to tell me how you think we'll set that up. So team one is going to take letter A. Team two is going to take letter B. So how do you think we should get started? If we use the giants over two thirds, so we're going to use the giant. We're going to use the giant because we've just been. I want to put two, three over two on the top two. Is this where we put, I always forget, in the top part of the one, do we put this? Yeah, let's get the so we don't switch it back around. Do the problem as to be. Oh, okay. You just have to say that. So just say Yeah, all right. When your group is done, send your recorder reporter up to the board. Okay, send your recorder reporter up to the board to write their equivalent ratio down. So Brian, what are we comparing? Because it's going to be more important that we have our units than to have our numbers. What are we comparing for two thirds of the three fourths? Uh, part of the recipe and cups of sugar. Okay, so we're we're comparing sugar to the recipe, right? Okay. So what did we do when we set up the problem? Okay, so you have sugar over here. So remember, if we have sugar in the numerator over here, to make it equivalent, we have to put what in the numerator on the other side? Sugar, sugar needs to be on the other side as well. Okay, right to start with. Okay, for letter A, what are we comparing for letter A? What are we comparing? Austin M? Cups to the servings. Cups to the servings, okay? So we have three quarters of a cup in one serving. And it, it, according to this, the problem is asking us how many cups in 12 servings. Is that what the problem is asking us? Read it again. How many cups in 12 servings? Or how many servings in 12 cups? Maddie, what is it asking us? Um, it should be um, how many servings are in 12 cups. Okay. So I like how we set this up, cups, cups, servings, servings. But we just need our information in the right spot. So how many servings do we have? Do we know? No. No, we don't. How many cups do we have? Twelve. Twelve cups. Okay. Do you think it would be beneficial to write these into your notes? <laughs> Does that match what's in the book? Okay. So I have pounds to pounds, tubs to tubs. Okay. I have cups to cups, servings to servings. All right, people to people, 
person, or pounds to pounds, okay? Sugar to sugar, recipe to recipe. All right? Then I have silver to silver, pendants to pendants, and back to pounds to pounds, tubs to tubs. Okay? It's okay, but this does not make perfect sense to you right now. Okay? We are not working on mastery for this. Okay? Instead, what we're working on is practicing using real life situations because you are going to have to use these kind of things. Okay? You are going to have to use these kind of things. We're just working on using real life situations to practice our division problems. Okay? So the skill we want to master is dividing fractions. Okay? So it's okay that this doesn't make sense to us right now. This was really good practice. Okay? And I appreciate that all of you hung in there while we were trying this. What you are going to do now in your groups is make an estimate. What does it mean to estimate? To estimate. To have an estimate. Jacob? A guess answer? A guess answer? Is it just like, well, I think it's going to be one? Do I need a little bit more? Okay, so a thoughtful answer. Okay, Chris? An educated guess? What do we mean by educated? Like it's just really smart? Yeah. It's going to college. Oh, right. My yeah. guess is going to college. No? What does that mean, Ryan? It means like you can see where the number is going to be kind of like in between two different numbers. It's going to be like one of those. So use all the information that's given to you to make a guess about what the answer might be. Okay? Is it okay that your estimate isn't perfect? Yes. yes. That's what we want. Okay? So we are not going to try to solve these problems yet. We're not going to solve them yet. You are just going to try to make an estimate of what you think the answer might be. Okay, let's spend no more than about, let's say a minute on each one. So about five minutes working on A, B, C, D, and E, making an estimate. So a strategy that's worked for some of the groups is figuring out is it less than one or more than one, and they're using that to figure out and compare. Well, is it going to be more than the number we're starting with, or is it going to be less than the number we're starting with? So if we look at, are we on letter D? C? Okay. So what are we comparing in letter uh, C? Okay. So if we're using the more than one or less than one idea, what do you think? Okay. It would be more than what we have because we're converting. No, we don't have a I'll just do that because I want to do more. Oh, no, we can't. If it only makes two thirds of a recipe and you want to make one whole recipe, would you increase the amount of sugar or would you decrease the amount of sugar? So it would be more than four thirds. But the answers to these problems might be. I think it's one and four. Because. Okay, one third of the recipe is one half cup of sugar. So then, if you add one more onto it, so it'd be three fourths plus one half, which is one. You're thinking one and one fourth? Gabrielle's reasoning makes sense to you? Yeah. Okay. And so, Leah, you said that it was more than one, um, more than three fourths cup of sugar? Okay. So, does one and one fourth make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. So now going across, 2 times 3 is uh, 6, okay, 3 times 2 is, okay, 6 over 6 is the same as, good. Okay, so now if I take the denominator times 3 halves, what do I need to do with that? Okay, so if I take the denominator times 3 over 2, what do I need to do with the numerator? Wait, you have to take Okay, so what do I end up over here? So 
like nine eighths over one. It's the same as it's five and you got the same answer. Oh. So you cross multiply? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, hmm. What do you think about that? It's easy. It's easier? It's easier for you to remember, so that was a good strategy for you to use? Yeah, I think that one of my elementary teachers taught it to me before, and I just forgot about it. Sure. Okay. Abe, what's your favorite method? Do you use the super giant one? Do you use the cross multiplier? Do you use the keep change flip? Keep change flip. Austin, what are you most comfortable with? Uh, if I'm doing a whole number, which I'm going to do a whole number, I'm going to do a whole number. Okay.